Welcome Black Hollywood Live fans, you are watching the after show for the mid-season finale for Queen Sugar, Freedom's Plow. Stay tuned for more. We are back. Welcome Queen Sugar fans. Wow, what an epic mid-season finale we had. Ooh. We haven't even talked about it yet. We no. want to save it for the show. <laughs> uh, but again, my name is Shaka Smith. You guys can find me online, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Shaka Strong. Yeah. Skates, that baseline nice. Right. You can find me on Twitter at Angie underscore skates and on the gram at big underscore Ange. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Kelly Skates here, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Urban Gypsy LA. Yes, and uh, let me tell you guys, you're listening to Tuesday Fresh Cuts by Bree Tranter. Like um, let me put you guys on some game. Whoa. Tunefine.com <laughs> will show you all the um, favorite songs from your episodes of Queen Sugar. So that's Tunefine.com. But let's get into it. This was a heck of an episode. It like, really was. A little bit of a roller coaster, but I like the way it finished. Um, what did you guys think about Charlie's transformation at the top Team Natural? <laughs> I have a couple of notes for Team Natural, actually. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She was ready. <laughs> It's great that, you know, black women are embracing their natural hair yeah. texture, but I do, <laughs> no, like, and she's biracial, so she can do that, but um, I do recommend a big chop, you know, you go from <laughs> straightening all the time on that heat damage, that weave, you know, the braiding up all the time, You're, it's going to be damaged, it's not going to have a good curl pattern. And her curl pattern was a little bit, you know. I no, thought it was beautiful. It was. It was. She's a butterfly. She <laughs> she came from a caterpillar, yeah. you know. And she well, she it was almost very symbolic of the new Charlie because this was a real. This was a, this is a new person that we're seeing, especially with her vulnerabilities. Yes, the last episode we saw her start to be more vulnerable and speak her truth with the reporter, and then this time she's like taking the next step and wearing her hair natural. And regardless if you get the big chop or not, that step is difficult to take to like embrace your natural beauty, so to speak. It has its ups and downs. So I don't know. Even the way like Micah's kind of looking at her, like what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. She she already knew without him even saying anything. Thing. Micah, Ralph, Angel, too, commented on it. Everybody's been commenting on it, and she's been getting good feedback. And I do think it's it's from the outside in, you know. Oh, no, from the inside yeah, out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it starts from the inside, yeah. and now we're starting to see with that transformation and the work that she's been doing on herself since she moved out there, really. Yeah, and it, it was a personality change, because at least for me, one thing that surprised me a little bit was the scene between her and Ralph Angel. Um, and her reaction to, because she hadn't been talking to him. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think about her reaction to? Uh, well, first of all, I thought he was out of pocket anyway. Am I yeah, on the we'll payroll? Get on that well, again. we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get back to Ralph. I'm but, gang up on you, Ralph. Yeah, yeah, I got some things to say to you, Ralph. <laughs> but I thought her reaction was very emblematic of her change. What did you guys think about the way she handled that? Um, I think I've always known that there's two sides to Charlie, or that she's capable of being soft in that way, especially towards her siblings. And I, I kind of expected that. I don't know. <laughs> like, because it's not it, unusual for siblings to have it out, like, over really big issues and not talk for a little while, but then come back, like, what's up? Like, right. That's normal. And then, I honestly, I think it's not even different for her to be soft with him. I think she even tried that last time. Mm -hmm. I think he's receiving it different, and that's something else that happens when you wear your hair naturally or straight or any other way like how you're received comes off different how you're yeah. so perception, perception is everything. everything so you know I don't think it was abnormal for her to be like you're my brother I'm not about to let you get in trouble with your parole officer yeah for me it was it was the energy shift because you know he's asking if I'm still on the payroll because he expects a fight mm -hmm. and I almost thought an, a different type of Charlie who she was a little bit before this would have been like I'm not ready to talk to you right now let me watch you fail and do the things you said you would do and watch you fall flat in your face mm -hmm. before I come in with the big sister's sort of love. That is true. I can see that. She will like chop you down with it, her words yeah. first and then come in and, and then be like, say, watch me say solution. this, yeah. this yeah. is why you need yeah. 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 She has grown a lot. You yeah, she was soft kids. this whole episode. Yeah, she made a choice to like Even be different. Too. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I, I also like the interaction between her and Darla too. Yeah. What do you guys think about that interaction? <laughs> Sister girl. Because no, she almost felt a little bit betrayed by Dollar for a second. Yeah, but then she softened for her too because yeah. Darla stood her ground. Can we say that Darla <laughs> held her own in this episode? Like, yeah. I respect. Because we've kind of, like, we started in a place where I didn't I didn't really Care trust you, Darla. Yeah. I didn't really care. You, you know, but you, you pulled me in. I'm rooting for you. Much respect. Like, good, good. You. 
Yeah, I was happy that she was open to hearing yeah. Darla's side. I'm glad that she even allowed Darla to come back to work because she could have, even in that instance, been quick to say, oh, no, because I can't trust you, you can't be here. But Darla, like you said, she spoke her truth, too. Everybody's speaking their truth yeah. in this episode. She stood her ground and was very clear about her stance and said that that wasn't her truth to tell. And she's yeah. right. And I feel like you can do anything but respect that because that wasn't for her to say. Like, she would have been betraying him if she spoke on it. And I, I love the way Darla broke it down. I, I, I agree with Darla, which I really do. So I was like, <laughs> right. okay, okay. I, was like, I see you, Darla. I see you, Darla. <laughs> and I was really proud that Charlie showed up at her two-year um, sobriety. Yeah. Thing I forgot she, she had invited she'd asked her. her. Yeah, yeah. Really. And then she told her that she would be there. I was a little disappointed that I didn't see her at first. And then Ralph comes in alone. And she's like, oh, this guy. But then Charlie comes. I'm like, yeah. yes. She's like, I got yeah, you back. Two people, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. I loved. And then let's just go right to that end, that end scene of you see the full transformation of Charlie just letting it be raw and vulnerable. With Remy. Yeah. Oh. Which I was a little weird out by because I was like, I thought she was going to go back to David, but, you know, we'll get back to that later. Yeah, prediction <laughs> was wrong. <laughs> Not yet. This is the mid-season <laughs> finale. Yeah. The mid-season finale. Right. <laughs> um, no, but I finally, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it was um, um, good timing, honestly, and it seemed like it was really tender. Yeah, and, and just really, that begging moment yeah, too. Yeah, like I was thinking that too. Like, when do you know how how to let go? When is it time to let go? You and know? move on. And move on. Yeah. yeah. At first, I was kind of mad because I guess I'm like protective of the siblings as if they're my own. So mm -hmm. when Remy came in and was upset about the article. I'm like, well, at first I thought he was upset when she was going to tell it. Now you're upset because she didn't. And I'm like, which one is it? Like, which side are you playing? Why are you so concerned? Because I thought you weren't ready to be in a relationship. Yeah. So at first I was kind of irritated, but then I'm glad that, you know, we saw what she actually wants. Like, she was clear, like, no, I want to move forward with you. Like, are we together or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go together. Yeah, that's how it felt. Like, like is that what we have to do? We have and to she be cried. really forward She's not a crier. vulnerable yeah. to, like, yeah. get into a relationship. But, but I think for Charlie, for her, she needed that. She needed to be able to be that way with Remy. Yeah, Absolutely. Remy needed to see that in order yeah. for him to trust her. For sure. Yeah. I like that part too when she was like, I'm not calculating with you, Remy. With you. Yeah. I'm like, that is true. <laughs> like, that's the one person she's not she calculating with. Yeah. She's yeah. been like very raw emotionally. Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad that she now knows that, that she has that self awareness, that she knows she is calculating. Mm -hmm. But not with you, Remy. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to go back to my predictions on that one because yeah. I don't know what's going to last. But, uh, <laughs> well. um, and then we had, uh, I guess we'll get into raw a little bit right now. Uh, we had Ra, and we had that whole. I was kind of heartbroken in the beginning with that scene with Blue, because Blue always forever thinks something. It's Did his I fault. Do and I think most kids do that. They're like, like, is it me? Yeah. What do you guys think about that beginning of that family dynamic? Um, again, we see Darla stepping up, opening up to Blue, telling him her truth, and I think that's necessary. Yeah. I just felt like, okay, Ra, you gonna have Blue out here feeling sad because of your pride. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like that pettiness, that level yeah. of petty is actually hurting your son. Yeah, like you are gonna give up everything with that you're building with Darla just because she's not by your side at a very specific moment. Like that's so childish. He's really selfish. He's yeah. so childish. And if we get can we get the comments up so we can maybe see those as well? Because people have something to say about Ralphie, I'm but sure I always, always like to see. <laughs> I like to see their take about like, Ralph. Yeah, our views are not nice about Ralph. Uh, they tell the truth. Well, I mean, yeah, his personality, like his character, is sort of that whiny character that kind of messes things up and is really sad about it and trying to fix it. Since we're talking about Ralph Angel and his whiny character, what about Darla's counselor? Um, oh. Loved her. Yeah. Loved that scene. She basically told him, if you can't support her and be here for her, you need to leave. And yeah. it's just like, how, again, we have that, that thing where we're in a relationship. It's like, how do you know when to let go? And it's when to hold on. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it underscored for him that, like, you being here to support, that, that's her life. Like, this is, her life is at risk. This is her sobriety, which is her life. Right. And so I, I liked seeing him get that message and then making another decision later on. Yeah, I'm glad that somebody finally gave Darla's perspective. Like, I feel like he didn't really, he wasn't able to receive it from Darla, so it's good that somebody was able to be like, you know what, I don't know if you're good for her. Because for so long, the family's been like, oh, we don't know Darla if you belong with the family. Finally, someone's like, Ralph Angel, can you be good enough for her? Yeah. Like, I'm not sure. And that was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. 
a little bit. We got what Ralph Angel has a younger child syndrome, spoiled and controlling. Yeah. Isn't he the oldest though? No, Ralph. No, he's no. Ralph is the oldest. Yeah, Ralph. Ralph is the youngest. Oh, I thought yeah. Charlie was the youngest. I think no. Charlie was a middle yeah. child. I thought. Oh, I thought we all, I always get big confused. Yeah. Can y'all well, tell us? Uh, which, uh, which, uh, what is it? Uh, what is the truth? <laughs> I just thought it was get Noda, to the truth. and then he stepped out, had Charlie, and then they, he went yeah. back and had Ralph. No, I thought he had yeah. Nova, uh, Ralph, and then Charlie. No, I always yeah, I thought it was Nova, Charlie, Ralph. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's definitely the youngest. He's the youngest, yeah, for sure. sure. Okay. Um, I don't think Darla loves Ralph Angel as much as he loves her. She's staying for I don't think Darla loves oh, Ralph Angel really? as much either. I don't think so either. That's a good observation because she's she stepped away to take care of herself. She's been clean for two years. She got yeah. her stuff together. She did that away from Ralph Angel. Mm. Ralph Angel is like, I need somebody here with me to get my shit together. And it's just like, how many times... Like, do we see that dynamic where the the woman is is Ooh. expected to be there while the man gets his stuff together, but she's like kind wait, of wait a minute. So he, now we're getting into wait, the proposal, but, guys. But but he, but he he was there for her when she was when? obviously when? on the when? ground. He's always oh come to me, I need you now. Quit your job. But, <laughs> like, why you make him sound like a cartoon character? Because that's how you make me feel. But at some point, she definitely needed him, and he was there for her. When? So, back when in the drug that? day, in the drug days, she would fall when he down. Was in jail? Well, at some point, she had fallen down far lower, couldn't take care of herself, and Ra was the one that had to step in and be there for her. Well, is it that he stepped in, or was he not good for her sobriety? Like, maybe he's not a good guy. Like, because he sounds very needy. That's, that's, no, he, that's, he, that's he, the concern When for he me. proposed, I'm like, I'm thinking, uh, nah. Darla, run. <laughs> like, it wasn't romantic that he's crying. For me, I'm just yeah. like, oh, I gosh. I thought that was a beautiful you just, scene. You what? just sound weak. You sound like you don't want her to leave you because you're starting to see that she would be okay without you. Yeah. And you yeah. can't be alone. He, he was vulnerable. He said, well, you're being nice. He's always vulnerable. He always got his emotions. Not good enough. Not good enough. You were <laughs> asking me to marry you. You didn't even keep the lights on. <laughs> no. You didn't keep the lights on. And, you know, I'm not a materialistic kind me of girl, either. but I didn't even see a rock on. Um, did you see it? No, a diamond? it was just a little bit. It was just a band. Oh. That part, I'm okay. Well, you know, you I'm know, okay with yeah. That too. yeah. But I'm, like, I'm going to need the electricity, though. But it's just like, <laughs> how are you going to ask me to be your life partner and you can't even keep the lights on? Like, what what kind of mess is that? But he's got money coming, right? He's got a farm. He's working it. He's, he's got family. I don't money. know. So you guys would have said no if you were Darla? I would have said, not right now, baby. I ain't going nowhere, though. <laughs> well, yeah, you would have been out. <laughs> yeah, I she don't know. Like emergency, emergency. <laughs> no, I'm the. T- Never mind. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Too much information. But no, I don't feel like she should marry him. Well, I mean, they're not married. They're engaged now, so she still has time to figure it out. Yeah. But I don't know that. That's. Sh- I don't know if he is really good for her sobriety. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I feel not like to agree. have somebody that's needy like that. That does not sound good. Like her, her responsibility needs to be blue, not Ralph. But Angel he's and always blue. there for blue, and I think that's where she, he's good for her sobriety because he's always there for blue. So without him, I think there's no structure for her to come home to. Because Blue doesn't really have a structure with her, but he's got a structure with Ralph Angel. I, and, I think that structure has been blown to smithereens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Why? Yeah, I just, he's, not, he's not providing a stable home. It's a community effort. If it wasn't for Aunt Vi, I don't know where Blue would be, honestly. That's true. Oh, that's a tough one. And well, speaking of Aunt Vi, um, I liked her this episode, but we she was very much the griot again, very much giving that sage advice. But we had that little bit of a scare, which, I mean, I guess we'll have to go into predictions because that didn't, couldn't have come out of nowhere. Yeah. But I, I kind of did like, she falls down, passes out, she gets up, and she's got advice. She's like, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> y'all just throw your shit out. Get your shit together. That's why I'm half done. I'm tired. That's real life, though. That is so real life. How many times have we stressed our, our elders out like yeah. that? And they just like, they got to get the truth out. But hold up. Get away yeah, from like me. one more second. <laughs> Right now, hold up. Yeah, but that scared me. I'm like, I'm very... fine. What are we gonna do without you? Hollywood yeah. He said she looked worn out. Yeah. Yeah, I have a know. feeling that's gonna come back to something. You know, nothing happens without a reason on Queen Sugar. Um, and then we had Nova. And so Nova. But what did you guys feel when mm. you saw Dr. Dubois at the airport? At the airport, before we get into what else may have happened. I thought it was corny and didn't. Oh real. my god. Like, no, I like the idea of it, but like. <laughs> 
really you at the airport queen for queen. real? Okay. Sugar. You, you, you guys are tough. <laughs> you I guys know, are tough on I us, I really man. felt like a cynic or a skeptic at that point. I'm like, this is not real. Ain't no man waiting at the airport with no queen oh. side. Oh. That's why I had to ask myself, like, do I even believe in love? Because I don't know. Yeah, like, I feel like I was, I had a negative. But shouldn't you believe response. that's what you deserve? And that's what, and then here's this man is finally providing like it? It feels like I'm reading a Disney movie. Yeah. Like, your prince shows up with the queen sign. That's not really oh. how love works. No, it's good that's, to that's see bad that. That's bad. I know, right? I, I'm sorry, my sister. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what we have done to let you guys be so cynical. I know. It's so bad, huh? <laughs> A Disney movie. <laughs> I thought y'all would have been heartwarmed by it and everything. No, I mean, I wish. I don't expect that, though. I yeah. don't either. Well, I think maybe it's time you do, and then you'll, it'll happen more often. Yeah, but I'm okay with getting an Uber, too. <laughs> no, you should pick me up. I, I mean, know. he can, but if he doesn't, you, you, I'm, re- I'm okay. You leave a message for the Uber driver, I'll tip you if you come in with a sign that says Queen. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm but like, no, if my dude did that, did do that, I probably would kiss him be like, babe, you're so corny. You know, like, yeah. it is still corny, but it's, it's cute. It's corny, yeah. but it's, it's romantic. Sweet. <laughs> so let's get to this dinner party, which... I, the only part that pissed me off about the dinner party is like, why wouldn't you give her a heads up? Like, why wouldn't you let her? Knowing he, Nova. He says it as they're walking oh, yeah, in. Because like, he already know he wrong for that. He already knows. But, he, yeah, what'd you guys think about it? Probably what she just said. Probably she wouldn't have want, wanted to go. Yeah. She would have found a way to not go. But I think he needed Nova. Because sometimes it takes for that other person to be in that room to give you that other perspective or to, to change the energy to make you see, okay, I can't do that anymore. I can't be in the circle anymore, you know? Yeah. And I kind of think that she did that for him. But he was messed up for putting her in that situation. And I I was just telling Kelly today <laughs> how I'm tired of being in a room with... Oh. <laughs> 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 with, with like mediocre men, musty old men, that racist. Just, racist old men that just need to sit down and shut up because you're irrelevant. No, <laughs> oh my goodness. But but there is a reality, you know, and the reality is whatever these are colleagues, whatever he's, he's got to be there, and so why not maybe work to some degree from inside rather than outside. We, we, we talked about this too, about reaching back and, you know, moving on and proliferating into that world of wealth and e- you kind of lose focus, you lose sight, you lose touch. And I think he did. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, there's that element where you have to play the game, like he said. And so I agree with him on that. But I think maybe he didn't tell her because he really wanted her to come in there and do what she and does. And get that reaction. Yeah, I think he wanted her to be her and not come in and try to sugarcoat anything and tell her truth, but then still play the game with him because he's going to offset it. He already has a relationship with all those people there. You know, he he, he clearly knew what he was doing. What if it yeah. was a test for Nova and she passed? You know, I, yeah, I don't think I don't think it was a test because I, I do see do, he doesn't seem to test. You know, he's not someone who's going to test you, mm-hmm. but I think he is someone who wanted to tease out her real self and have them experience right. it. Right, and then I mean, even when they were leaving, he said someone from CNN is interested. Like yeah. he told her, like, no, you don't have to pretend. Like, be you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because someone at the other end of the table loved it. Yeah. So I think that's what he wanted. Though at one point I really was like, is she going to like fisticuffs? Like, is she going to be like turn over the table? That's <laughs> I, I, I was wanted hoping. to do. I wanted- well, I mean, <laughs> The t- the table well, some of the topics they were talking about, like, and those I, are things she's really and, passionate about too. And yeah. I'll be honest, I'm a little ignorant about this whole Zika virus thing, but like, there's no way they referenced it, and it's and not, not a, thing. a real thing. Yeah, right. How, did you guys hear about this? Is that there's somehow? I've heard about it, but I don't know enough about it to say oh, like, oh, it's, it's going it to happen in New Orleans yeah. because it's the perfect breeding ground. I don't know enough about it. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And then they touched on immigration, and Donald Trump today is making this yeah. immigration thing. Like, who's writing this, and how are they getting this out so timely? I know. Um, you know who's writing it. We have one of the writers on. She's not it, writing for this season, it, but they're brilliant writers, but obviously. Like, it's they're, like somehow they know what's happening in the real world, and they time it. You know? Yeah, timing is it's impressive. Crazy. So I think our viewers have some questions for you, Shaka. Uh, what? Wait, they, they say, like, would you compromise to play the game or keep it 100, like Dr. Uh, well, well, for me... Keeping 100 and compromising to play the game can can be the exact same thing. Mm. Um, if you're if you're focused on your goal and you don't get lost in the fact that you're playing the game, mm. so if you can play the game in such a way that that your voice then gets elevated for your truth and your truth still comes out, mm-hmm. then I think it's uh, I think it's valid. But you have to find the right situation and you know feel it out. But to me, I thought Dubois was doing that. 
-hmm. And so I thought he was offering her a different way to play certain situations. Mm -hmm. There are certain times to be this way and another time that you can figure this out so that you get your message across and you're on the same stage with these people. I was pissed at him until he showed up at her doorstep. And I kind of just felt like finally Nova has a partner, not just in this romantic life, but in this political, socially you know, active, you know, life. And I think that's important. It's just like, how many times can you find that it rolled into one person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was never pissed at him, honestly, because I feel like that's who he presented himself to be when she first met him. So... It's, it's almost like how he can't expect her to be somebody else. She can't expect him to just turn up and be somebody different. Like, that was part of why they had all that tension that, and yeah, energy in the first, first place. Yeah. Well, I was pissed because of the no heads up. Like, just a little bit of warning would have been nice. Yeah. Like, I agree with yeah. that part. That I was like, why would you bring a woman like this who might just go... Yeah. Yeah, she could <laughs> lose her, all yeah. her shit. Because we saw her lose at that, that dinner. So I was like, I, I know what level she can bring it to oh, now. Yeah. And, but I totally agree with Auntie Vi because she kind of counseled her and was like, look, girl, you got a good thing, you know? Yeah, um, hold on to it. She checked there, and, and I loved can. it. Yeah. She said, "Hold on with love and not, not desperation." desperation. Yeah, and I so thought that was brilliant. She's dropping all the gems yes. like she's about to leave us, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, someone brought up Chantel, <laughs> Hampton Blue. He missed Chantel for Nova. Remember Chantel? Was that first season? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Her little girlfriend. Oh, my God. No, I I don't miss her. That was fun, but I I like Mr. Dubois. Yeah, he's he's doing good And I like that he just shows up. I mean, I don't really like people popping up like that, but... (laughs) She had just tied up her hair. Yeah, about to have a bonnet chronicle, and then he's at the door like, um... But I like that, you know, that was a drive, you know? So he's making... He's making so much effort and putting in so much effort to let her know that she's special yeah. even cares, with the queen yeah. sign it's like he's making it clear through his actions that no like i'm serious and yeah. i don't think she's ever experienced that before you know yeah and, and i agree she hasn't been chased by a man before and i think that's different because exactly. she's exactly always with that. calvin she's chasing that guy yeah, you know? yeah. and being yeah. with the married man yeah. and yeah. doing all this stuff and then he's passionate about what she's passionate about but he's just been in a different world on a different side of it so she He's opening him up and he's opening, opening her, her up, up. and yeah. they're both excited about the same thing. Like <laughs> you that's so exciting. Excited I'm excited too. I was I'm like, okay, excited. give us hope. I'm yes. here. Yes. Like get together and make cynical these moves. Moves. Uh, I know we well, cynical sisters today. <laughs> well we got we got a little bit more. I guess we'll, a little bit more to Davis and Micah and yes. Yes. so well the top we get Dave well, what's her name? Davis and the singer, right? She's singer or reporter. Uh, what is she? I don't oh, know. She was doing Tom- some charity work. Tomorrow, tomorrow right? Yeah. yeah. So we get them having this meal. What do you guys think about this potential budding romance? It's moving way too fast. It's too Wait, fast. Too fast? Like, Wait, what, what's the, happened? They just the, had a glass of wine. Yeah, they yeah. hold their hands and she talking about, I think I could be your second chance. Like, yeah, like, me. why do you even want to be his second chance? You don't even know him yet. Don't you ever get excited about having a second chance at love? I don't tell him on the first date. <laughs> 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 I'm still reading you. I'm still filling you out. Right? But remember, for her, it's like it's also Davis. Remember, he's a celebrity in this world. Yeah, like, that's why. I that's like even it. more reason to be like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, like, buddy. Good, <laughs> what you want? What you want exactly? Oh my God! You got, and he you got this talk? whole big old public case. Yeah, I think we should take uh, it slow. I, you know, I think Davis is probably suffering a blow from the fact that Charlie doesn't seem to want to get back together right now. And I think that's something he does want. And so I think he's trying to move on as best as he can. He's still someone coping with loss as well, even though he inflicted it, self-inflicted. But Yeah, he definitely is. And I kind of felt like, I think that was you last week that said, or a couple weeks ago said that he can't move on yet. Like, yeah. it's like you don't want him to be happy and that's kind of how I felt when he was sitting there like no you don't get to have a beautiful woman on your arm that kind of resembles Charlie yeah. on paper you know yeah. it's like nah man you don't get to be happy yet but then Charlie's happy so the, now that Charlie's kind of finding her happiness it's like okay Davis I guess you can breathe a little bit so, so you're willing to allow him a but little breathing I want breathing him room. to work for it yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. she's already handing it over hey, like this you is, know this is Davis man this I is like see. how many rings he's got come that's on that's true yeah all right, All right, ladies. <laughs> so Davis finally gets to the truth with Micah. And it, it was such an emotional, emotional scene. But I got to say, I was like, thank God he was raped. I was just like, oh, yeah, thank God. Yeah, I know. I was like, tra- traumatic, but whew, the alternative, because it was going that way. Yeah. What do you guys think about that scene? I mean, it hit home for me. I've been in similar situations. Um, uh, I've been held at gunpoint by LAPD. Thanks. <laughs> 
Um, so I know that's why I was, I knew that he had experienced something. I just didn't know what, and I know that that can change your whole life. It yeah. changes your whole life. And that's what we're seeing. And, um, he's being a, a lot bolder. And I, I just think that it's, it's, it's appropriate that he opened up with Davis in that moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was very emotional. I feel like that's, that experience is definitely something that could change your life. That's a certain it's it's abuse, man. Yeah. I don't, it's what else can you say? And I, I'm glad that he was able to finally share it. Um, I did think it might have been rape or something like that, just because he wouldn't tell it. Yeah. So I I thought what it was, I figured and then, he, he could have shared that sooner, but clearly it hit mm -mm. something. And I, the way they led up to it, no? which was what was killing me, was like. Uh, so a spoon in your mouth, I'll put something else in your mouth. I'm like, oh, geez. And so it was just getting darker and something darker. you don't want to relive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I still have stories and parts of the stories that are untold from, you know, encounters with police. And it's just, I understand him not wanting to open up and relive it. Relive it. Yeah, and, that, and it, it, it's such a scary encounter. Cause it, to me, it's almost a little bit different if you have an encounter with a um, police where everyone's around. People can see it. Like, it, it really sucks, obviously. Oh, yeah. But, like, to be driven past a police station, and out, you have no alley. idea, like, what's going to happen. Yeah. And you know that there's going to be no recovery, of, like, in this yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah. And I just feel like that was a life or death situation. Yeah. Like, For and, sure was. Yeah. And he said they actually pulled the trigger. Yeah, right? they yeah. pulled the trigger. I but. can't imagine. Like, the psychological thing, damage drama, from that is yeah. crazy. Because yeah. I was wondering, especially when he had peed himself, like, that was a little odd because he'd only been there for a few hours right. or whatever it was. No, it makes way now more it sense. Makes all, so, yeah. Shaka, do you still think he's soft? It, it, no, and and to be honest, uh, when I kept saying he was soft, it was more that the reaction just didn't match what had happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't see him because he, you know, Nicholas Ash is a great actor. So I'm like, he's not overacting the scene. So like, I believe the emotion that I'm seeing, but that doesn't match up to a couple hours in jail. Mm -hmm. I don't care how rich you are, a couple hours in jail, you know, you're not shaking up, not eating that kind of thing. So now I'm like, okay, now it all makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Uh, what <laughs> else did we have? Mike and Davis, a little selective immigration. <laughs> 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 I think I think we're ready for predictions. Are we? Or what did you guys? What did you guys want to speak on? Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what happened with Mike in this episode when he was with Kiki and um, oh, Kiki's that's friend. Yeah. What happened? What? I was just saying, no, it's not better than rape. Rape's, it's, you know, rape is about power, and this was also about power. And I think yeah. that's true, too. That's so that, true. It's a I, there is a There is a feeling that you're being raped because you're, yeah. yeah. you're, you're not in control. You're not in control. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You know? Um, oh, she said he's still soft. I'm done. Oh, my I'm God. Done. No. Y'all are still with Michael. I know. Okay. Y'all believe in love, but not this. Uh, right. <laughs> All right. We know who our viewers are now. Uh, oh, um, yeah, the girlfriend. Yeah, so they were um, watching a situation happen, unfold with um, um, some other uh, other couple of black kids. Yeah. And the police. And then we have their white friends come in, and they are unbothered. Don't even, they're they not even aware of the situation. Yes. Yeah. And it's just like the duality that's present in our world as African Americans, as black Americans. It's huge. We exist in two different worlds. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, I think I said it last show when I was talking about. I had a white friend driving. He cut the cop off, and I was just like, "Why are you? Why are you doing this?" Yeah. <laughs> and he just, you know, just kept going, and I was like, "Yeah, we that's never. nice." I was like, I love "Wow." You slow down, most times. Yeah. Let this cop get by. Let me like, okay, yeah. Lord, please, please, God. And, it, and, it, and it's so ingrained; it doesn't even feel unnatural. It feels like this is what everyone does. Yeah, so I was right? shocked that he just. <laughs> took off. But I, it, it's such an issue because we talk about white privilege, but I think a lot of people don't know what it means or what it looks like on an everyday scale. Yeah. And that and was that it was right there. there. Yeah. yeah, so that was a powerful scene. Yeah. That's it. That's I also like the oh. scene when Nova was rubbing Unvi's feet. Oh, me too. Yeah. Like, I just really thought that was beautiful. I wish my grandma would let me rub her feet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know we were trying to rub her knee the other day. <laughs> she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, I think we love watching this family take care of one another. Yeah. And it was so nice because... I, I love that it ended with those like love scenes, like those yeah. three love scenes. It's yeah. like everyone came together in love. And so 
I was complete by the end of it. How'd you guys feel? I feel whole now too. I feel like we could take a break and I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, I thought I was gonna feel like I was have like a cliffhanger. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but I feel full. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like okay, you guys, you guys are gonna be okay. And it, it actually made me excited because nothing can ever just be okay. It's a, it's still a TV show, so I'm like, <laughs> I can't see how this all falls. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, because, They're good yeah, for now. Yeah. But... <laughs> so I get to sleep easy tonight, but I know. Um, what is it? October. Come October. Where, you know, shit's gonna hit the fan again. Yeah. <laughs> um, why don't we go into our predictions? Um, well, like we were talking about, I think something might be up with um, Vi. I think even Hollywood's saying she's worn out. I think maybe they already know something, or I don't know, he's picking up on something. Um, I don't think Remy is gonna be able to deal with Charlie. Yeah, I feel you. I feel one. like. I feel like, because even when Charlie was uh, speaking her truth and honest, then she still had the backlash from the farmers. And so it's like this still there's always going to be a need for her to be strategic. And I don't know if he can keep up with that side of her. And that side of her has to be there in order for her to run that meal. So I feel like there still might be issues there. But I don't think she's going to get with Davis. Um, And Mm -hmm. I want Nova and Dubois to just really get it popping. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Have a baby. Ooh, <laughs> uh, uh, nice. What are they saying? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna say my predictions. Okay. Yeah. You read it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that I also think that uh, Remy and um, Charlie are not gonna last. Um, unfortunately, they'll have a good run, but yeah. it's not. They're not gonna make it. And I think that Auntie Vi will definitely have some issues. Um, but I think we're going to see Nova rise up, like, to be the matriarch of the family. I think that Ooh. we've seen her struggle a lot with her self-identity, but I think um, Dr. Bu- 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 Dubois. Dubois. <laughs> I'm like the Boudreaux. Oh, yeah. Dubois. Um, Louisiana for you. Um, I think that he's really going to help her, like, get to that next level where she needs mm. to be uh, within the family and yeah. even in her own life and career and stuff. Well, I, I can say... Uh... I think I agree with um, Capria. Davis will come between Charlie and Remy for sure. Mm-hmm. I do think that she's going to end up back with Davis for a period of time. I was saying they're going to have a fling. They're going to have. Okay. S- they're going to get back together in I some like re- tangible night. way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to break poor little Remy heart. Yeah, and, and you see, Michael wants it so bad. He wants yeah, his family I back. I saw that. That he made me kind of want it just because I saw it. <laughs> yeah, he wants his family back. Um, I think Nova and Dubois are going to be really good, good for each other. I think. She might get a little overwhelmed about kind of playing the game the way he plays it, but I think he'll be good support for her. Um, Ralph Angel. Man, mm. it's, it's oh, yeah, I didn't even... I, he can't I, keep the lights on, I, y'all. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he and Darla are going to last. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would say she's probably going to remain so on her sobriety because it's been so long, so I don't want to see that happen for her, but I don't think they're going to last as a couple. Nope, um, she's taking blue. <laughs> and that might, that might happen. No, that really might happen. Yeah. Like, I oh, can now see it. Yeah. yeah, I see the light. Well, because Ralph Angel technically doesn't really ha- have, he doesn't have anything. anything. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. have a light. Not even yeah. a light. <laughs> but, but before he had something because, you know, the family thought they all owned the thing right. together. So at least they were invested, but now he doesn't really have that. They don't have that. So um, I, I think... Do you think Charlie's going to pull out of the farm? No. I... I I don't think she's going to let Ralph Angel completely flounder. But, but she's going to yeah. make him realize you need this. Well, she's going to put her attention to other things because you told me. You had had, Exactly. So, that so. was so naive of him. Like, to have that conversation with Auntie so. Vi. Like, I didn't mean. I was just, uh, <laughs> like, ugh. That's Turn not how life works to that trifling mother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, what else do I have? I, I kind of agree, too, with uh, Nova and Dubois. I feel like. I feel like she's kind of gotten used to fighting the system the way she's fighting it. So to fight it in a different way, it might, I don't know if she's ready for that. Yeah. I feel like she's just, it's her comfort zone to fight on the grassroots level. Yeah, and there might be a part of her that feels inauthentic, not being fully voiced at all times. But sometimes you got to bring it to level down Mm -hmm. and then before Mm -hmm. you can really go, you know. Right. And so hopefully she learns that. But I think she is. I think he's going to be a really good, like. Influence, yeah. And then I think, obviously, I think something more serious is going on with Vi. Mm-hmm. Um, medically, and so I think we'll we'll see that get teased out. Yeah. But this was a this was a heck of an episode. It was. Yeah. It was a great mid season finale. I know. Yeah, well it, done, Ava, and all the ladies over at Queen Sugar. Uh, right. No, I'm yes. still expecting Charlie's mother to really raise oh, yeah. some sort of hell. 
And so I'm still waiting on that to happen. So that's going. I'd to. like to yeah. see that. I want to meet her. Yeah, because I think we're gonna need to see some new <laughs> characters shake up this family a little bit. We mm-hmm. haven't heard much from the Boudreaux. There's no way the Boudreaux are just gonna let this su- sweet family just keep going and right. taking their business away. People so. keep saying that some way she's connected to them. Um, and she may be, she yeah, may be, we'll but see. which would be an interesting That'd twist. Be very interesting. But she does seem very family oriented. So even if she's connected to them, I think she's gonna still be very loyal to the oh, people yeah. she's oh, with. Of course, so. we all know that mama though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't know what that effect will be. <laughs> but thank you guys for joining us. Thanks. We had a good one today. Yes, great episode. <laughs> um, as always, you guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Shaka Strong. And you can find me on Twitter at Angie underscore skates and on the gram at big underscore and. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Urban Gypsy LA. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Bye, guys. See you in October. <laughs> From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff. We would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.